Okay, after a little bit of disassembly, I have removed the injectors, the intake manifold and everything else. So to be able to remove the valve cover, I'm going to take the camera stand and I'm going to show you what I have found out underneath. Okay, let's remove the valve cover. And now, let's see the most typical issue that these engines have. So let me zoom in. So, let me try to show you. This is how much swag this chain has. Yeah, I even jumped at it. So yeah, for sure I'm not going to start up this engine anymore. Before addressing this issue. So, yeah, now, yeah, now I cannot jump it. But yeah, this is how bad and how lucky the owner was because as you can see it was really easy to jump a tooth on this gear. So let me show you how it looks like underneath. Okay, so we are a little bit ahead of the jump. As you can see the gearbox is out and uh, is secured on the jack stand. Uh, and yeah, we're going to leave it here. Let me show you the timing chains. Yeah, let me take a white, it's a little bit dark. Okay, so this is the timing chains, the upper one and the lower one for the crankshaft and the camshaft. I already removed the oil pump. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to show you what is the swag of the camshaft chain and what is on the crankshaft one. Okay, so once again, this is the crankshaft chain, which is thicker than the camshaft chain. And let me show you. So, this is the swag of the camshaft chain. So, as we can see, it goes around everywhere. And on the crankshaft chain, as we can see, it's pretty tight. It does have any movement. That's why most of the people are changing only the camshaft chain, which in my opinion is not the greatest thing in the world, but uh, probably uh, the camshaft chain has maybe around 50% less life than the crankshaft one. Uh, that's why they do it. Uh, but as you can see on this engine, the owner was really lucky that the car came in our shop uh, by its own. So now we're going to replace everything the guides the gears of the camshaft and on the high pressure fuel pump yeah the the, the crankshaft does give a gear this is part of the crankshaft uh, and yeah we are not going to change the oil pump we're just going to change the timing components with oem ones and in the end of the day hopefully this engine is not going to have any more this noise which i record in the beginning and yeah like on all of these bmws with n 57 engines, we are addressing the issue with the coolant radiator 
which is plugging in with some debris and the car starts to overheat that's why uh, that's why we are cleaning this on this car so preventively let's say uh, and yeah so let me assemble everything I have already a video about how to do it I'm going to post it in the description below and in the end I'm going to show you how everything looks like and pretty much let me show you the, the parts so here are some OEM parts all, all around the table I need to sort them up because we have some parts for this BMW E63 also which we are replacing the oil of the gearbox and timing components uh, so the parts here are a little bit mix, mixed uh, but yeah we are going to use once again OEM parts for this this is the oil nozzle for the timing chain and some bolts for the camshaft this is the guides yeah this is one of the chains probably for the oil pump it's, it's too little to be for the other two things I'm not sure I think still the other two chains are not here I'm going to show you uh, before start assembling so all the parts are here for the timing procedure this is the guides this is the top chain tensioner this is the lower chain tensioner the boat gears on the high pressure fuel pump and on the camshaft the three chains as we can see here this is the crankshaft seal this is the o-ring on the oil pump the bolts on the flywheel this is the bolt for the camshaft gear i'm just waiting for the bolt for the high pressure fuel pump but it's going to come after a few minutes uh, yeah don't forget to change this oil nozzle it's a must uh, and yeah everything else is gaskets the gasket on the open the, the gaskets on the intake manifold the rocker cover this is for the oil level sensor gasket and this is for the oil dipstick and yeah we have tested all the injectors on the car the owner wanted to see how they uh, in what condition they are it turns out that they are in perfect condition so we did not need to do anything uh, so he were lucky enough with this so we're just going to reinstall them back together and now i'm going to remove all the old timing components and install the new ones and i'm going to show you how it looks like with everything installed okay just a quick comparison between the <coughs> new oem chains and the old ones which uh, I don't remember did I said but uh, this is the second time this car is receiving a timing chain job uh, so as we can see this is the difference I have placed them on the end of the table and this is how much longer is the old one versus the new one I know if you see it like that it's nothing but <coughs> when you place it on the engine it's totally different most of the time this doesn't speak a lot but rarely go you're going to see even that that kind of difference this is a lot believe me uh, so yeah uh, I believe yeah, the tensioners had some difference <coughs> many times BMW <coughs> are changing the head of the tensioners by that you're going to know which tensioner you have installed the old one or the new newer style as you can see the newer style have this let's say thicker head of the tensioner and the old one has thinner head so this is the newer style and uh, yeah of course the newer style timing chain guides plastic guides are uh, solid as we can see this here not like this so it's only two of them are like that uh, but the old ones as we can see all of them are not solid if I can call, it, call them like that uh, so yeah I'm going to continue installing all the parts and going to show you how it looks like in the end in the end Okay, so everything assembled, all the chains, the three chains, the guides and the tensioners, as we can see. I have to rotate the engine four times, everything is aligning where it should be. So everything should be fine with the timing now, all the chains are stiff now, not loose like before. Of course only the, the chain on the oil pump is loose, which is normal for these engines, uh, but all the others are stiff. Let me try to show you, as we can see we don't have any movement on the upper chain or here on the crankshaft chain it's stiff and it's not going nowhere for at least the next 150,000 kilometers now we're going to reassemble the timing cover the open and uh, yeah the rocker cover and the rest and i'm going to show you in the end how it sounds hopefully we're going to fix the annoying issue of ticking sound of this engine 
in the end of the day, the owner decided to install a brand new oil pump. So now we're going to reassemble the rest of it. The, the, the open, the front axle. And, we go, and I'm going to show you how it sounds. So everything assembled together. Now I'm going to start up the car and going to show you how it sounds. You're going to catch up on the mic, on the microphone that there is no more sound like before. Just a normal oil gases. So I believe this was the main issue, the timing chains. I was suspicious about the the hydraulic lifters, but uh, the sound was not the same as when they fell. So I was pretty certain that was that the issue was going to be the timing chains, but uh, you never know. In our case, it was that. This was all about the repair of the timing chains and uh, servicing, not repair. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.